I had a summer job when I was a 15-year-old girl that was a few miles from my house. I lived in a rural wooded area and my parents never let me go into the woods by myself, but they worked days and my job started at noon every day, so I had to walk to work. So every day, at the same time, I'd walk through the very much abandoned state forest down a deer path for a mile or so until it intercepted a railroad track. Then I'd walk a couple more miles down the railroad tracks into town to my job. Stupid, I know, but I was 15. Taking this path always freaked me out and I always felt like I was being watched, but it was shorter and less sunny and less hot and so I ignored my instincts thinking my parents' influence was just making me paranoid. My parents would pick me up after my shift, unaware of my daily routine. This continued for weeks. One day I'm walking, about a mile from any houses, deep in the woods, and there are two porn magazine pages that had been ripped out and placed on the trail facing me. They hadn't been there the day before. I was completely creeped out as they were clearly intentionally placed, and probably for me, since very few people utilise this area. But I kept walking because if I turned around at this point I'd have further to go to get out of the woods, and then there was a huge hill to climb to get back to my house, and no one would be around there to help me anyway. This was a densely wooded area, with brambles and dogwood and rolling hills, so I couldn't see very far in any direction. Suddenly I could hear someone else walking close by. I stopped and I would hear them for a split second and then they would stop. They sounded like they had change in their pocket, so I knew it wasn't an animal, but because of the echo I couldn't tell where it was coming from. Just to check that I wasn't crazy, I stopped once more and heard the same noise which quickly stopped when I stopped. That's when I knew I was being stalked. My heart was racing with fear and my vision went blurry, but my instincts told me not to speak and not to run, but just keep walking down the dense deer path, further into the woods. My gut told me not to look behind me. I could sense there was someone right behind me on the deer path now, but I did not look back. Now, I'm a rather short, slightly chubby person, always have been, and looking at me you'd probably assume that I couldn't run very fast, so if you wanted to catch me deep in the woods you might assume you had plenty of time to do so. And looking back, I think that is exactly what this creep was thinking. But back then I ran cross country and track, and could run a seven minute mile, and hills were my specialty. I always placed really well on hilly terrain. By no means was I a great runner, but certainly I was likely faster than whatever creep was hanging out in the woods stalking a little girl. It's not that I was processing this thought at the time, I just instinctually knew not to run. Yet. I kept walking seemingly deeper into the woods, because I knew the train track was up ahead where there would be more space to run without tripping or getting caught in the tree branches. It was terrifying to not look back, but something told me not to. While I walked, I felt like my entire body was shutting down. It's a feeling I've never felt before or after that day. It was the feeling of being prey. Everything went blurry and I could feel blood pulsing in my ears and my heart was pounding. I just kept walking like nothing was happening and did not turn around, but I could feel someone maybe five or ten feet behind me at this point, following me for a good eighth of a mile. I didn't turn around. I didn't scream because I knew no one would hear me. As soon as I got nearer the train tracks, which were elevated along a man-made gravel mound, I ran. And then I ran on all fours up the hill, gripping onto weeds to pull myself up faster, and then I sprinted along the tracks as fast as my lungs and legs could carry me. I heard and saw branches snapping below me in the woods, but now I was out in the sun and the woods were dark, so I couldn't see what was behind the branches. I just kept sprinting. I never even saw the person, but I knew their intentions were awful, and I didn't mention what happened to my parents until I was 18 and had moved out of the house. I was too afraid of being grounded. I've been walking alone in the early morning hours for years. Two to three hours each time, I've probably accumulated thousands of hours walking under the cover of darkness. But recently, I stopped. The reason that initially pushed me to these nightly walks no longer exists and after one recent experience, I've realised it's time to move on. A few nights ago, I was heading down a familiar path that led into the entrance of a forest. As I approached, I noticed a flashlight moving along the trail ahead. It was erratically sweeping across the path as though the person holding it was searching for something. I hesitated by the entrance, figuring I'd wait until they passed. Despite the loud music in my earphones, 
I could hear the sound of a man's voice seemingly talking on the phone. I didn't think much of it, and nothing seemed particularly unusual, until he stopped. He was only about four feet away from me, though I could barely see him. The darkness obscured most of his features, but I could make out a silhouette of a man with a large German shepherd by his side. He kept talking, but not to me. I decided to slip into the forest, but as I turned to leave, he began shouting. Pulling out one of my earphones, I heard him calling, It's the police! Take your earphones out and stop walking! I felt a jolt of adrenaline. I hadn't realised he was trying to get my attention this whole time. Apologising, I turned around and answered his questions. He said he was looking for someone, a girl, and asked if I'd seen her. I hadn't, so after a brief exchange, he walked back into the woods, and I headed home. It wasn't the most terrifying encounter, but it left me with some lingering questions. Why was he looking for a girl alone in the woods in the middle of the night? If he really was searching for a dangerous person, things could have gone much worse had I ignored him any longer. And though he claimed to be a police officer, I never saw a uniform or anything to confirm his identity. The whole situation was eerie. I still haven't seen anything about a missing girl in the news, but I just hope she's okay. About a year ago, I had another unsettling experience, though this one was much scarier. It was 2am and I was walking through a local park, a place known for being a bit rough. Despite its reputation, I'd always felt safe during my hours of walking there. That night, though, it was different. It was pitch black, and the only light came from some distant street lamps. I couldn't see more than a few feet in front of me. As I walked, music blaring through my earphones, I thought I saw movement far ahead. My heart raced as I focused on the spot, only to realise that whatever it was, it wasn't far ahead, it was only ten feet away. The shock hit me like a punch, and I immediately turned and ran. I didn't stop until I reached a well-lit area, walking past affluent houses that felt safer than the dark park. As I glanced over my shoulder, I saw him, a hooded figure emerging from the park, keeping the same distance behind me. He wasn't running, just walking but every time I increased my pace, he did the same. It was unsettling, to say the least. The street I was on stretched for about 200 feet before it met the main road. Halfway there, I looked back again. He was still there, maintaining the same distance, matching my every step. I was walking fast, but he never fell behind. When I reached the main road, I turned again, and this time he was only five feet away. My heart leapt into my throat. I didn't think. I just ran. I sprinted all the way home, barefoot in my sliders, and never looked back. He never followed me, but that encounter still haunts me. Maybe it was a coincidence, just another night walker. Or maybe it wasn't. If I had hesitated for even a second longer, I might be telling a very different story. Over 30 years ago, I experienced something that still fills me with dread to this day. I was a college student taking an outdoor survival course. The final challenge was a three-day, three-night solo trip in the wilderness. We were allowed only the basics, a sleeping bag, a knife, some matches, and water purification tablets. No food, no water. The goal was to rely on our skills to find sustenance. I was excited, eager to embrace the solitude of nature. After hiking to my campsite, I built a small fire and spent the night under the stars, feeling completely at peace. The sounds of the forest lulled me to sleep. The next day went smoothly. I found a muddy stream, purified some water and enjoyed the serenity of my surroundings. But by the last afternoon, something changed. I had cleaned up my campsite and returned to the drop-off spot to wait for my pickup when a car I didn't recognise pulled up. A man got out, his unsettling stare fixed on me. He asked if I was alone. I lied, saying my friends were nearby, but I could tell he didn't believe me. He drove off, but my relief was short-lived. Minutes later, I heard his car returning. I bolted into the woods as he called out searching for me. My heart pounded so lowly, I thought he might hear it. But eventually he gave up, and I listened as his car drove away. After what felt like an eternity, I stumbled across a forest ranger. I explained what had happened, and he told me I had every reason to be scared. There had been an incident the night before involving a young woman, and the man was still on the loose. I was lucky to have trusted my instincts. 
Just over a month ago, I had another experience that made my skin crawl. I was jogging along a tree-lined street as part of my fitness routine. It was a warm day, and I wasn't worried about anything but the heat. As I jogged, a car passed me, slowing down to match my pace. The driver honked and waved, grinning in a way that made me uneasy. I dismissed it at first, just another cat call, but then I saw the same car again. This time, he made a U-turn and came back toward me. That unsettling grin was back, and this time I felt exposed, vulnerable. My heart raced as I sped up, hoping to put some distance between us. But then he passed me again, having made another U-turn to follow me. Panic surged through me. I wasn't far from the gym, but my legs felt like lead. My heart pounded as I forced myself to keep running. By the time I reached the gym, I was trembling with fear. I collapsed inside, safe but shaken, my anxiety morphing into a full-blown panic attack. I had never felt so helpless before. That driver had gone out of his way to follow me again and again, and though nothing happened, I couldn't shake the feeling that it easily could have. When I was seven, my dad, older brother and I, along with our cat, stayed at a secluded cabin deep in the woods for a week. My room, the furthest from the others, faced the woods, with a window that had no curtains. Outside was a large tree I had tried unsuccessfully to climb earlier in the day. That night, homesick and reading comics by flashlight, I heard tapping on the window around 2am. At first, I dismissed it as wind-driven branches brushing against the glass, but then I heard something that made my blood run cold. Whispers. A voice, low and coaxing, said, Open up, son. It's Daddy. Let me in. My heart stopped when it continued, chillingly mimicking my father's voice. Come on, it's cold out here. I just want to cuddle. I froze in fear. I knew my dad was asleep in the other room and there was no way he could be outside. Terrified, I turned away from the window clutching my cat as she hissed and clawed defensively at the unseen threat outside. Too scared to shout for help, I pressed my face into my pillow, hoping whatever it was would go away. But then, through the dim light of the moon, I saw the figure at the window. The man was grinning at me, dragging a pocket knife across the glass, the blade making a slow, deliberate screech as it scratched the surface. My heart pounded in my chest, as I finally found my voice and screamed. My dad burst into the room with his hunting rifle in hand, but the man was already gone, having fled when he heard my father coming. He had likely injured himself during the fall from the second-story window, but we never found out for sure. The rest of the night none of us slept. The next morning we packed up and left. My dad filed a police report, and I gave a description of the man as best as I could. Our cat, who'd been my protector during that terrifying experience, is turning 14 this week. She's still as feisty as ever, and continues to bring me comfort.